Hello everyone, welcome back to podcast 10. I'm Holly. And I'm Amelia. And this is the Wearing My Money podcast and today we're going to be talking about all things spring 2024 trends. I can't wait, we're going to talk about beauty and products we're loving. We're also just going to have a catch up on what we've been doing. We've got some new restaurant recommendations. As always. Amelia has some gossip for us. Oh goodness. Which I'm making her spill. So wait until the end for that because yeah. I'm a bit nervous <laughs> to talk about it but. Well let's let's ease you in. Let's kick okay. off with things that we're excited <laughs> for for spring because currently the sun is shining through the windows. It Thank was God. really horrible this yeah. morning though. I went to do some parcel returns I walked out with sunglasses and an umbrella just for all eventualities <laughs> it was sunny and then I got to the end of the road and I had to put my umbrella up honestly like even like yesterday like we when we went for lunch for an event it was sunny when we got there yeah chucked it down when we were at lunch and then sunny again when we left which was perfect but you cannot trust the weather at the moment no you need to be prepared it's it's not so giving. get yourself a nice umbrella it's really annoying as well because you never know what to wear i know so i'm ready when i see the sun i want to wear spring colors and whites and creams yeah, and nice trousers. Sun, like, and like summery shoes but you don't want to get them yeah, ruined no. the rain flicking up the back of white trousers oh, is not my the one. frankie shop trench coat at the back is just awful thank god i'm small so no one can see <laughs> <laughs> it's awful <laughs> But let's talk about things that we're excited for for spring, like having an April oh. in the sunshine. Are you an April girl? Well, I do like an April. Yeah. Do you not remember that we had Aprils yeah. together at the pub up the road? Oh my God, I cannot wait for that. We like, we'd come home from work and we'd just be like, should we go for a drink? And we'd yeah. just sit in the sun. Oh, lovely. Sun on our face, April in hand, and we'd literally not talk to each other and I just know. watch the world go by. <laughs> I did... Um, I did overdo the Aperols one time, so it has yeah. kind of put me off. Yeah. I'm doing um, a Lele. Lilette? Not the tampon. What's the tampon? <laughs> <laughs> There's a brand, an alcohol brand yeah. called Lele or Lilette. Right. It's a French liqueur and it's a vermouth. And I am working with A vermouth? With the, yeah, it's a vermouth liqueur. It's beautiful. And they have a rosé version and a white version. And it's so delicious. My friend Helena and I love it. And I'm actually working with them on a reel to do a spritz. Oh, lovely. So maybe that's the new... Maybe that's the new Aperol. So when you need help recording, yeah. I can come round and do a little Well, test. that's what we can do this weekend. Fabulous. Because I need to create this gorgeous spring cocktail. Maybe I'll make it before our Sunday roast. Yeah. So it is Easter weekend and we have a lovely plan to go for a roast dinner. A family lunch. <laughs> we've, we've basically booked two restaurants just in case because we've booked the Orange Pub in Belgravia. Yeah, it's part of the... Is it the Thomas Cubitts? Yes. Yeah. It is. I've been to the... Oh, it's not the Andrew Edmonds. It's... um. I really want to go to Andrew Edmonds. There's though. another one anyway, just past, I'll tell you where it is when it comes to me, Cafe Kitsune. Yeah. There's a pub, that, the Alfred Tennyson. Yes. Which yes. do a really good roast. Yeah. So Ooh. I have high hopes for the Orange Pub. I've been to the one, I've been to Thomas Cubitt's yeah. in Belgravia mm-hmm. by Joe Loves and okay. Portal and Peggy. Um, yeah. And that was really good for food, but I've never been for roast there. Mm. Second option is 50 Cheney, which I've been wanting to go to for I years. Know. I've lived in Chelsea for three so years. How long has it been open for? Years. Oh, really? Yeah, and yeah. I just never had the opportunity to go, and it looks fantastic. Ah. I keep seeing these reels pop up on Instagram and TikTok, and it's like, the best roast in London, and 50 Cheney is, is always on there. Is it? Yeah. It's the, mo- it was, it's the more pricier one out yeah. of the two, because I feel like people can go really, like over the top with the price on a roast dinner it is expensive but i yeah. feel like easter weekend like let's treat ourselves. i know exactly because it is easter treat weekend ourselves. and i'm actually i've only got a lunch planned on friday so my treat to myself okay. is saturday sunday sorry sunday roast bottle of wine yes i said that really absolutely. quickly absolutely so we've got that booked in which we're very very excited about yes. um but some other restaurant recommendations mm. that we have from this week I went to the Dover. Now, again, I've been seeing this all over Instagram. 
and I had to go and try and it was phenomenal. It did not disappoint. Ooh. The interior is gorgeous. Oh, it looks stunning. It's a really good date night yeah. spot. Was it the one with the dark wood and like very like yacht? Yes. So the outside is black. It's very yeah. unassuming. Yeah. It is next to what's that awful restaurant where everyone dances on the tables on Archer Davis Street. Street. No, not Archer Street. Oh my god, it's the most obvious restaurant. It's just totally gone from my head. I don't know. There's like Monkey House. Where's this? And it's on Davis Street. Where's Davis Opposite Street? Opposite Inca. Monkey House is on the road. It's um. Bagatelle? Bagatelle. 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 Oh, I thought... Next to Bagatelle. I thought people loved that. I thought you were going to talk about that. I mean, no, it is good. I thought I you were going to talk about the pizza place by Knightsbridge that you oh, and your friends go. That's great. That's that's a lot of fun, pizza pomodoro. That's crazy. So it's next to that, and it's just black on the outside. It's very unassuming. You you would walk past it. Like, yeah. I've never noticed mm. it before. And you walk in, and it's all, like, yeah, very dark, very sexy, deep reds and browns and wood tones kind of got a bar that you can sit at and then the restaurant is more towards the back oh nice you go through a curtain oh, I like when you that. come in Very it's kind sexy. of like speakeasy yeah. vibes yeah really good italian food it was gorgeous oh lovely i would really recommend i would always i would say to go there as well if you just wanted to go and get a drink oh okay good yeah. like drink spot yeah pre-drink oh, i like that i do like a drink at a bar yeah i went to 108 yesterday Mm -hmm. which we'll talk about later and that Mm -hmm. was really lovely that was really nice we went to Chilton as well but 108 Mm -hmm. I've not been to before and that was like all like marble bistro oh wow very French brasserie vibes quite like that because it's not an obvious choice of somewhere to go no and it was right by that steak entrecot oh my god I'm dying to go there as well it was packed again so busy but we'll go in Paris. Yeah, I think we should go for Paris. I think we should. That's as well. like obviously the the original. Yeah, and we'll go for like I don't know when. We'll yeah. just queue. We have Paris coming up, by the way. Very just excited. To put context to that. Oh, that will be a good episode. We can talk about. Yeah, what absolutely. To pack for yeah, a 70, 72 hours. Yeah, seventy two hours. Yeah, seventy two hour hours. trip. Trip. We'll do all our best <gasps> restaurant recommendations oh, from there so as well. So excited. Um, We also went to a beautiful event yesterday for Ellie Saab. It was for the launch of their new bridal fragrance. Beautiful. And they hosted the lunch at the 22. It's a private members club, but they also have a restaurant and a bar, which anyone can go to. You don't have to be a Mm. member to to go there. And they have like private dining rooms. And so we had lunch there and it was stunning. It was really good, wasn't it? It was really good. I really want to eat upstairs though. Because downstairs obviously is like the private room. But I really want to try like the food on the menu. Yeah. I but do the set too. menu was so delicious, so fresh. They're really good for allergies. I had a really nice like coconut sorbet and vegan mm. mousse, and that was chef's kiss. That was really yeah. good. And it smelled divine in there. Oh, not so just good. because the fragrance was good, but like the whole actual building mm, just it smelled, smelled luxury. Oh, so so good. Oh. I love it when you walk into a place and you just like. Smells like money. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it was really good. But on the topic of the Ellie Saab bridal perfume, that was beautiful. Yeah. It was like, I think it's amber, vanilla. Yeah. It's got musk in it. Like a really yeah. like, not so obvious scent yeah. when you think of bridal. And it's really lovely. It's quite a modernized, I think, approach of what you'd think a bridal yeah. perfume would be. Because it still has that like powdery rose mm. kind of classic note to it but, but it's a not bit an obvious more, smell yeah yeah and it's, it's really not too beautiful. heavy which is really lovely as well it's quite light it's a very like sexy bride mm. yeah like a a cool confident kind of bride really lovely yeah <laughs> so amelia's just come back from dubai and we all need to know her dubai recommendations because oh. the woman has fantastic taste i feel like there was there's so many new places there and also as well i let my friends just take me which was really nice because usually as we know we're both big lovers of restaurants and recommendations Mm. and going places so i wanted the the locals to take me to some restaurants and we went to some really nice places that i'd love to recommend one of them was drift which was a I think you can go for dinner as well, but it was a really beautiful pool day. I think they do like girls' day and 
is it Ladies' Day? Yeah, when it's like all the day. discounts. But I basically went to Dubai for a long weekend with my mum and one of my best friends live out there and her family pretty much live out there as well. They're always in Dubai. And we went to Drift for a really lovely day and mm. we had these really beautiful... It was on the beach as well, which was stunning. Yeah. Um, and the vibe of it was just really classy. I think sometimes when you think of pool days... And, and like beach clubs, you think a bit yeah, tacky, champagne spraying yeah, everywhere. But it was really nice. It kind of yeah. gave like Ibiza Dubai do it very, vibes. very well. Really nice. And with the beds, I think it was... I think it was £60 each, but we got a bottle of champagne, which obviously in my books is a winner. Um, really lovely. <laughs> so what lovely. was it like? Because it was Ramadan. Ramadan so I, was fine. I wondered if it would be like quieter. Like, do you yeah. think this is a good time of the year to go? Does it affect anything? I think it was the perfect time of year to go. I think the weather was incredible. It was a little bit windy as well, so it was really nice temperature to like mm-hmm. lay in the sun all day. Because usually when you think of Dubai, I don't think about sunbathing yeah. at all. Like when I've never we went to tan in Dubai. No, when we went in April, it was just I think we lied in the sun for like what two hours, yeah, not even and that, like and then shade. we just hide. Um, but it was really good temperature. Ramadan, I think a few years back or even even last year, it would yeah. have been a problem. Um, but I think because there's, it's so super international now, it's such a holiday destination. Mm. A lot of English people live there. I think, obviously, they do have respect for the culture and um, their religion. But everything was quite normal. We thought that the live music would be off and everything like that. But there was a kind of like a club beach place next to the Royal Meridian which was actually quite nice. They didn't have any live music because it mm. was on the beach. Um, oh, right. So I think where it was was a bit more of a public area. So if it's area. kind of like out the way and like not an obvious yeah, spot where it's I like think throwing it's okay. it in. Yeah, because even we went spaces. to Opa and that was about like smashing yeah. plates and kind of causing havoc. And that was still yeah still going. And busy. But yeah, but yeah like really, really busy. busy. Yeah. That's good. That's so I'd good recommend Drift um because that was really lovely the food was incredible stuff was amazing just a really nice like calm vibes Mm -hmm. and then i also went to mot 32 which was a really lovely asian restaurant we went for bottomless brunch which i don't think i'm a brunch gal like it was really lovely but i think i would like to go for actual food I think that the problem is with a bottomless brunch is like where do you go from there yeah because you get so drunk. I get so oh drunk. Oh my god! That so drunk. Well, last time we were in Dubai, what, can you remember the the brunch we went to? It was called Clap, and Clap. that was really fun. That was fun, and that was but sushi. It's kind of like after that, you don't want to go for dinner because you're full. You're already so drunk, yeah. so you're not really in a fit state to go out anywhere else. So then it's kind of like, would you go home? Do you just stay out? You we ended up staying continue. out. Um, <laughs> yeah you continued <laughs> i continued i i did to continue. be fair i was good i had a couple of margaritas and then i just stopped because i think i've gotten to a stage now that when i feel myself getting too drunk yeah. i actually kind of tap out because i get too scared that i'm just gonna go overboard and then i just tap out and i don't know if that's like a single thing for me because i haven't got like a boyfriend anymore to... yeah but i act like your boyfriend i always look out I for you i always make sure you're okay do you remember the chilton you're probably like you're the liability do you remember how <laughs> bad i was in chilton yeah that was awful and yeah. i think i'm in, i think i get mortified of getting to that state again that i just because i go blackout drunk yeah and it just comes up so surprisingly <laughs> and then i'm just gone so when i get to a stage i'm like stop it's not good but yeah those are my recommendations <laughs> <laughs> and what are your essential beauty products like what was essential products that you took away to dubai that you were like couldn't live without okay i'm gonna start off with my belly my stomach because yeah. i feel like these like you have to have good deep bloating tablets yeah. good greens because i feel like your diet on holiday just goes to mm-hmm. Goes and all upwards. the flight and everything, it's oh just God, you kind of get flight. out of your routine. Yeah, the puffiness, everything. So I've written it down, like, kind of like five fire products that I would definitely take. AG1 Greens is a new thing that I've been taking. It's like 
a powder and you get little sachets took them on the plane with me as oh, well so me and mum were taking those and it's got like probiotics in there it's got like all the supplements all the vitamins it's got everything in yeah. there and it's got like spirulina um like all like natural ingredients in there as well so that was really good um js health detox and deep bloat mm-hmm. sensational um products wise Starting with skincare, I am loving Elizabeth Arden, their retinal cream or the ceramide capsules. Because in the ceramide capsules, so good for travel. Can you wear retinal though if you're like in the sun? So I didn't during the day in Dubai. Yeah. At home I do with SPF. Yeah. But I think in Dubai I just felt like the rays were just a bit more higher. So I just used that at night time. But oh my God, my skin... Every time I use the Elizabeth Arden retinal cream, it's just it's like mm. a it's like a Botox. It's incredible. And I don't do well with retinal at yeah. all. But this is just like incredible. And also as well, because of the capsules, it's easier to take away and travel. So yeah. loved those. Then beauty products. Actually body, let's talk about body. Yeah. I had the Byredo body lotion and it was the Chimen. Shimon. Mm-hmm. Chimen? is French, um, perfume, um, sorry, fragranced body moisturizer, that was heaven, and I think because it was in a pump, yeah, I just lathered myself day and night, because obviously you need to keep your skin moisturized, but even the Byredo shampoo and conditioner was so good, Mm. my hair was like silk, it was so beautiful, I loved that, and then obviously with hair, the Kerastes Repair Oil they've got. It's brand new. Yeah. Really lovely. And my hair adores it. And it's got a really nice fragrance in it. It's like kind of like a musky... Are you wearing it now? Yeah. I don't know if you can smell it. It's like quite like... Mm, yeah, it's can nice. You smell it? Yeah. Really lovely. And it just... I feel like it just helps with if you've got like flyaways and kind of just like smoothing your hair. That was really good. And then beauty products wise... I'll leave it here, but the Summer Friday Tinted Moisturiser. Okay. So good. And with um, blending it in mm-hmm. with your fingers, it was just perfect. So Has if, it got SPF in it? No, it hasn't. Oh, wait, I think it does. I think it only has like 20 in it. Okay. But it doesn't have enough to protect your skin. So yeah. definitely make sure you're always wearing a separate SPF. And as for SPFs, I always recommend, well, my go-to is the Sarah Chapman SPF 50. Incredible. And they do an invisible and, an, and yeah. a tinted one. I always find that sits really nicely under makeup. Really lovely. And also as well with SPF, I feel like a lot of people don't know this, but you know when you get moisturisers and it's got SPF in it? Yeah. That's not enough. It's like, it has a really small amount of SPF in there. So when you see like moisturisers, primers, foundations, which say SPF in it, yeah. that is not a good coverage. Yeah. So you need something like the Sarah Chapman to SPF. To the base. Yeah. So there's that one. Mecca do a really good one, which I'm using yeah. at the moment, and I love the Murad. It's like in a pipette. Oh, and it's like that really nice. liquidy, and that's really good as well. Interesting. I'd recommend that one. But yeah, I loved the tinted moisturizer because when we were like sunbathing and then we'd go for lunch, it was just easy just to like pop on. Zhuzh. Yeah. So, as well as beauty products for holidays, mm-hmm. let's talk about pre holiday. Yeah. Is there anything that you love to get, like treatments or? Everything under the sun. (laughs) (laughs) It makes you feel so low maintenance when you're on holiday. They're high maintenance things to feel so low maintenance on holiday. Well, I've already discussed this, so I'll just like briefly go over it, but laser, Mm. because I think you then don't have to shave on holiday. You avoid all the like shaving rashes and the shaving bumps. Yeah, and it makes me really self-conscious. It knocks my confidence a lot, which I'm sure it does for a lot of women. So laser is like one of the best investments. Mm. I always get my nails done, pedicure. I get my eyelashes tinted. I like a bit of a fake tan as well. I think it depends if I, well, is it true that fake tan blocks you from getting a real tan? I don't know. I've heard this before. Because it it clogs clogs your pores, so you don't tan as, as well. So I try not to, but I think it depends. If I was going on a short trip like Dubai where I'm like, okay, I'm not here long enough to actually get a a proper real deep tan, then I'm like, I'll just fake tan so that I look good. But 
yeah if it's like a long holiday then i'll just like being pale until i can have the real thing yeah definitely what else do i like doing botox botox is good very I good i told you guys how i get botox i actually <laughs> haven't had it for a really long time i really want to but i always find that in the sun where i'm squinting so much i get a frown line between my yeah, eyebrows yeah. and i noticed that when i was coming back from holiday it was kind of like permanently embedded it does go <laughs> over time but i no i cannot be having this but your botox lady told you not to come for yeah, a while she, she, she sent which me is a good a few thing times. That's, a, that's a compliment and it's good <laughs> yeah. for the bank but I just get baby Botox just to yeah. prevent those lines like it doesn't change anything about no. my face it just just you know smooths yeah. a little few things out I'm definitely due due to go I'm like looking at soon. you like you've still got like flawless skin no but look at that yeah but that's normal no but I don't want normal we don't do normal around here I haven't had Botox <laughs> yet yet she's a Botox virgin Literally. I'm gonna break her virginity oh my god but on the like that kind of treatment wise I also get done I got my lip blush done yeah at Tracy Giles and a hyperrealism brow Ooh. because I used to always get my brows tinted yeah and I feel like they don't last at all because you always wash like taking makeup off yeah. and they just rub off so it's kind of like a tattoo right. like a semi-permanent tattoo so having my brows done and my lips done is it called microblading there's microblading as well but hyperrealism tattoo I feel like the technique is different okay and it's a bit more of a a blended yeah. stroke it's a bit more of a subtle one and I went for a really soft approach because then when I wear no makeup yeah yours look very natural yeah but I still like if I want to put I make I put a bit more on when I wear makeup yeah. because I feel like it doesn't look yeah right personally. I mean you definitely want to wear less makeup on a holiday yeah. if anything like nothing yeah exactly especially when you're like going to the beach or you're tanning so I think it's just nice to do things that mean you don't have to wear makeup yeah it's so, it's so kind good. of like you want to just wake up and be ready to go yeah. because your eyelashes are already tinted maybe yeah. you just put a curl in them yeah. and like you just want to add feel, a little lip gloss yeah you just want yeah. to feel your best with yeah. no makeup so it's like doing little things to yeah definitely to help that and also no one wants to spend hours getting ready on holiday no. i want to get up get in the shower put my clothes on and go yeah and honestly like those small treatments even like the lip blush yeah not having to put like lip liner yeah. on just natural color so you can just kind of relax so good so good so yeah i'd recommend those as well so we're gonna go on to makeup trends whilst we're in the conversation mm-hmm. about products and what's going on at the moment one of the biggest trends is lived in makeup yeah and the reason why we're going to talk about this one is because the other day I went to a Victoria Beckham beauty launch for the Satin Kajal eyeliner, which works so well with the lived-in yeah. smoky look. It's such a beautiful yeah. product. It's incredible. It looks like an eyeliner, but I think it's such a versatile product because you can use it as a smoky eye makeup oh, yeah. look. You can do it for like the whole eyeshadow. So I've seen people; they literally brush it. Yeah, on, and then they close and their then they eye, just don't they? Blend and they it just, yeah. with their finger, or there's like a sponge at the back on the other side yeah. of the pencil, and it is so good. I got cinnamon; that was really. I mean, they gave that me the whole divine. collection. It was incredible. But they had some really incredible, like fun colors in there, like Bordeaux. So obviously burgundy, which was Ooh, really lovely, wow. and aqua blue. They had like silver shimmers. But the cinnamon one was like my classic nice. favourite one. But that works very well with the lived in mm-hmm. smoky yeah, look. Yeah, it's quite like that like grungy look. Yeah. Kind of like the mob wife aesthetic. Mm. It's almost like, you know, that Kate Moss supermodel look. Where it's like you've been out partying yeah. all night. I was going to say, so who can we describe day, it as like You've a got this person. like tossled hair, yeah. a nude lip. Yeah. Not much on the skin, yeah. but just like a really soft like smoky eye it's yeah. just very cool yeah. very cool girl isn't I feel it? like you could suit it I just feel like it wouldn't suit me <laughs> I've got too much of like a baby face I see but I don't really suit like a, an eyeliner much I do no. suit like a slightly yeah. dark eye if it's like very smudged out yeah maybe I'll give it a go I don't suit um dark eyeliner on my waterline mm. everyone does it because you've got quite big eyes, so you would think that it it would go. But I feel like it shortens my eyes. Right. And, like, it makes the 
eye line a bit more obvious so yeah. it shortens them where I want to they don't carry it on they'll just stop yeah and I think it shortens them if, it, if they elongated it and really smudged it out then maybe yeah. but yeah no one's achieved mm. a good well luckily for you the clean girl aesthetic <laughs> is still in and we've got like really dewy natural like glossy yes. makeup that's more me it's like kind of like ballerina makeup Mm. so that's also in but again it's like meant to be very effortless yeah also like you've just kind of rolled out of bed slicked your hair back yeah put on a glossy lip you've got glowy skin yeah i'd really recommend the charlotte tilbury hollywood flawless filter Mm -hmm. that's a really good holiday product as well because it's like your skin but better it gives like the tiniest veil of coverage yeah but super glowy yeah it's really good i think spring summer is all about that rolling out of bed and just kind of being ready to go yeah kind of vibe so we need to go and get our high maintenance treatments done yes for the low maintenance everyday lifestyle (laughs) then no makeup makeup look which cost a bomb (laughs) yeah so we're gonna do a fire question on beauty products Mm -hmm. this or that so the first one is what's your favorite mascara Currently, I'm loving the Iconic London Ooh, Mascara. Oh, that's really good. It's so good. It doesn't smudge underneath. No. You know, like, sometimes it imprints. Like, yeah. at the end of the day, you're like, why is mascara under my eyes? It never does that. I think the brush is really lovely. Like, it separates all your lashes perfectly. And I can just get my lashes, like, super long without yeah. them being clumpy. Oh, I forgot it's fantastic. About the Iconic one. That's, like, a really good one. I feel like yeah. there's so many on the market to try out. Yeah. But that formula is really good. And also, it's really nice to build. Yeah. That's a good shout. That's a good shout. What about you? Oh. Um. <laughs> <laughs> I love the Clarence. I knew you were going to say that. <laughs> I knew it. I could have put money on it. Really? <laughs> I was shot every time I say Clarence, but the Clarence, it's the green one. It's the Supra Lift and Curl. Mm-hmm. Honestly, I can't find anything better. And what do you think about the Refi new mascara? Is that a hit or a miss for you? For me personally, I like a really full, thick yeah. lash. And for me, it just doesn't work. But for that mm-hmm. kind of like no makeup, makeup look... yeah. It's really subtle. But I don't like the spoolie brush. For me, it's a miss. Yeah. I can't get on with the brush. It's I'm too finding short. finding it's so much effort to mm. try and get all of my eyelashes. Yeah. Because no one has the same eye shape. No. And it's such like that curve and it you can't really wiggle it into no. shape. You can't wiggle it to get all the little like lashes. Yeah. I think I'm not getting on with it. It is. I was trying to be really nice. (laughs) I was like, for me. I'll say it how it is. I love the other products. I love the blush. Yeah. In fact, that's actually all I've tried. And the brow. The brow gel. No, I haven't actually. I think I've only tried the blush. Which I do really like. Mm. Um, But yeah, I'm not a big fan of the mascara. No, it's quite tricky. I think they've tried to be quite innovative with the design of it but yeah. it just there's maybe there's a reason why things like that haven't happened before. i feel like with some work. yeah i feel like with some brands like well every brand you don't have a love for all of their products yeah. there's like maybe an iconic one or two that yeah. they've nailed and sometimes yeah products don't Should slap <laughs> favorite lip combo okay i go through many but the one currently at the moment is the hourglass lip liner in mm-hmm. trace I'm wearing it right now. And I love it with the Summer Fridays birthday cake lip balm. It beats the roads. Mm. I'm really sorry, Hayley Bieber, but she's probably not listening. (laughs) But I just, it's, the roads lip balm is so cakey. Yeah. And it's like really bitty. And where this Summer Fridays lip balm, like silk. Oh, amazing. I wear it all the time now. It's up there with the Clarence lip oil. So it's good. It's good. What about you? Mine has to be, my go-to is always Whirl Lip Liner by MAC. Mm. I think that's like the perfect shade for me. It's like slightly darker than my natural lip yeah. colour. And then I always alternate with what I put on top. Sometimes the it's the Lama Volumizing Lip Glosses, oh, nice. which I love. They kind of like leave a little tingly Ooh. feeling on your lips. And they are like a plumping. I was going to say plumping vibe. This is really nice. I've got some new lipsticks from YSL. Ooh. They are the High Shine or something lipsticks. Yeah. The packaging is gorgeous. So they're a lipstick, but they kind of give a glossy effect. Nice. They're really beautiful. Really and lovely. We're in shade 
150 right now. Lovely. Looks gorgeous. Honey. Thanks. <laughs> Cream or powder products? This is a tough one. I prefer <laughs> cream because yeah. I like how it melts into your skin. I think it looks a lot more natural. But sometimes if I do foundation and then a cream um, bronzer, cream blush, I find it kind of moves it a moves. little too much. The longevity of it isn't very forgiving. Yeah. So if I'm not wearing foundation, I'll do all cream. Cream yeah. bronzer. I love the Merit bronzing stick. Ooh, That's yeah. fantastic. Um, and then I'll always do a cream blush. I love the Westman Atelier yeah. one. I know oh you're God, a fan amazing. of that as well. But if I'm wearing foundation, I'll do foundation, powder bronzer, cream blush. Oh, you do cream on top of powder. Oh, is that a sin? Well, I just, for me, because I think cream and cream, like the foundation's a cream. Yeah. Then the blush is a cream and then I set it with the powder. And that makes sense. Because then it doesn't get a lot of things I do in life don't make sense but yeah. it seems to work <laughs> I mean it looks lovely <laughs> <hard. Thanks. laughs> for me I would definitely stick to powder for like kind of like every day yeah. I really want to try like we said the West, West Manitalia blush is mm-hmm. stunning yeah really beautiful colour it's called Petal our favourite one yeah that one and there's one called Minette Ooh, Minette or Minette and it's like this really nice like coral so it's really nice for spring Ooh. summer But I am on the way to try in because I had it applied on me when I was at Victoria Beckham. Apparently, the Victoria Beckham contour stick is incredible. I've then gone and done my research on TikTok and TikTok is probably listening to me right now. (laughs) Um, And it was amazing. And the lovely PR girl at Victoria Beckham, she actually prefers it to the Chanel bronzer. She's oh, been, I do love she's been the, the Chanel, Chanel bronzer. bronzer. Oh my and goodness, to be honest, really? I have, I'm not agreeing with it at the moment. I've tried using it and I just feel like, I don't know if it's because it may have dated or... No, because we only bought it in September. Yeah. So I don't know, but it's just not, maybe I just need it for my I personally just summer. prefer a cream bronzer when I've got no foundation on. Yeah. Because I think you can work it into the skin a Don't, lot more. You can kind of use it as a foundation. I think that with a cream bronzer, you really need to work it into the skin, which yeah. is why I sometimes feel like when I have foundation on, it's moving it around too yeah. much. It's too much cream on cream. Yeah, whereas yeah. I feel like a powder just swipes on and you yeah, can just blend definitely. it out a little bit easier. Yeah, that's a good shout. But yeah, I'm intrigued to see what this Victoria Beckham contour sticks like. And it's yeah. narrow as well, so it's a bit more... Um, define so you can make like a proper contour. Oh, nice. uh, there's a there's a Victoria Beckham beauty Wait, contour TikTok trend. Wait, I saw her trend. post. Yeah, a video on TikTok on Instagram. So I'm gonna do it. it. I'm gonna give it a go. I adore so Victoria Beckham, I think she's fantastic. She's fabulous, and her yeah. makeup products are really affordable as well. I think I'm they're yet like to try some. they're like they range from like um, I think the eyeliners were thirty pounds, and I thought well for I think for a high end fashion brand that's actually quite reasonable. I think that's actually kind of like charlotte tilbury price points yeah so it's quite good so yeah very excited to give that a go but i'm more powders at the moment for sure do you believe in primers and setting sprays i believe in setting sprays i love the charlotte tilbury setting spray Mm -hmm. even if it i think it does sit on the skin just so nicely and i feel like when you're adding powders and layers it does hold yeah and also as well i love it for like a refresh like Mm -hmm. If I'm ready to go out or I've had makeup on all day, just adding that setting spray just yeah. gives makeup that life again. And it's so I nice. like a setting spray when I finish my makeup and I'm like, oh, my skin looks a bit dehydrated or yeah. dry. Yeah. And it just like brings a bit more life back mm. into it, doesn't it? But I don't use primers. No, I haven't found one that I... Because I feel like our skincare is so good and I love the Sarah Chapman digital... Yeah reset that's Mm -hmm. a really good base that's a very good point actually i do Mm. think yeah if you have a good skincare routine you shouldn't really need a primer i guess it's better if you've got really oily skin yeah i know the giorgio mani luminous silk primer that's really good it's like a gel that is the foundation yeah yeah and the concealers they're just so good um but yeah the primer is really good for that but yeah i don't really use a primer Mm. lived in makeup or clean girl I like a clean girl. I like a clean girl. Yeah, I like <laughs> fresh, natural, dewy, glowy makeup. Yeah, I'm the same. I don't think you'd really see me in lived girl. A night out, I try and give a little smoky eye. Yeah. But that's as you far as it goes. You do suit it. 
Thanks. Like the um like the under eye. Yeah, thanks. Yeah. You're welcome, honey. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I know, thanks. That's why I do it. <laughs> Would you rather have your hair done or get Botox? I can only choose one or the other. Yeah. For like what, an extended period of time? Yeah, I'll let you off with an extended period of time. Oh, I mean, I don't even know why I'm asking this. Like, it's an absolute non-negotiable for me. I'd much rather have my hair done. Yeah. It is like your personality, isn't yeah. it? Like, I feel like if you've got good hair and, like, your hair is done... Yeah. You just feel so much better. Yeah. I'm in the... I need to book a hair appointment. Also just hide your wrinkles with the hair. Yeah. Just get fringe. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> Oh, I wonder, if, would you ever get a fringe? No, it no. would not see my face is way too round for a fringe. I'd rather my hair done as well. I think right now I'm at a very good stage where I don't yeah. need Botox. So... I agree, you don't. Thanks, hon. You don't. I feel like I want it because everyone has it. Yeah, and everyone has foreheads. get it as a preventative, though. Yeah, I want to get a preventative on my forehead. Yeah. Because I, that's, I do frown. And it's not bad yet. Yeah. So preventative. Yeah. But definitely my hair done. I'm mm. due to get my hair recolored, I feel like. Yeah. It's getting darker and darker and I just want to be nice and blonde for yeah. spring summer. Red lip or smoky eye? I think red lip. Really? I think oh, I don't know. It depends on the smoky eye, I guess. I think a, like a bold lip. I love because I've got quite big lips anyway. Mm. And I love like, you know when someone looks so clean and they've just got a bright color on yeah i always think that's so i think that's a good accessory too. personally for me i just think i look better with a smoky eye yeah than a red lip i love a red lip i've got big lips for them as well mm, you do <laughs> all natural baby right let's get this over and done with <laughs> i've I, been gearing amelia up for this i've been doing i've done it for the podcast yeah <laughs> Yeah, we, we said we need to do more research for the podcast and Amelia has gone out and she has done the research for us. So, I went on a date. <laughs> I went on my second date last night. Yeah, she did. So, this is one that you met on Hinge. Yep. Only I haven't been very lucky in love when it comes to meeting people in real life. Yeah. In the real world. Because I feel like no one actually gives that look do they it's a tough world it's out there it's really tough yeah so i kind of gave up on finding love via friends and just walking past husband in the street mm-hmm. it could um, still happen though it could still happen i mean obviously i'm not saying like this guy is like the one the one or the husband but i'm very proud of myself i've been on a date with a guy and i and a, with a person <laughs> And yeah, I'm very proud of myself. I haven't been on a date since July, so I was very, very proud of myself for doing that. Well done, sweetie. Thanks, honey. So can you divulge how it went? We want to know all the details. So first date was coffee date, right? Yeah, this is what I think was really nice about this date. And I think what made me feel so comfortable. Mm -hmm. And it was, I think I was really nervous and didn't want to go into dating because... I really couldn't be bothered to go out on so many different bar nights and drinks mm-hmm. just to meet random guys and be hungover. Because I know I, will, I won't say no to drinks. Yeah. So one, link, one drink always leads to another. So I now have gone for the approach of let's go for coffee first. Yeah. But actually he was the one who suggested it. So mm-hmm. I was like green flag. Um, and I feel like that was a really nice approach for him. So either I think it's a really good idea if you're suggesting a date a coffee date to get to know each other yeah then you're not wasting time if you don't get a vibe from each other then it's just a coffee and that's it yeah and it can be half an hour long it can be two hours long which actually ended up with us because we spoke for like three hours which was really nice then it ended up as a drink which was quite nice um and what did you wear i wore like a coffee oh my god really hard isn't it um so I wore blue jeans, yeah, a black top, like a little top, like a mm. ribbed cardigan. It was like a kind of like a ballet cardigan, yeah. like wrapped around. So it like showed my neck a little bit, but it wasn't yeah. like in your face. Trainers. Um, I hear that men yeah. love a neck. Yeah, they find it they, really sexy when they can see your neck. I think it's like also as well. One of our friends said it's like you're given an impression that you're 
wanting to be a, like you're open and you're looking for someone. Okay. Like if you're wearing something quite high neck, yeah. you're like putting your guard up. And these they weren't saying like be like get your tits out and yeah. be very like out there. But like a neck and a collarbone. Yeah. yeah. Apparently it's quite like attractive. That and shoulders, isn't it? It's the mm. most Oh, I did well on my second date then. <laughs> Had my shoulders out and my neck out. Wow. <laughs> he must be in love. He must be in love <laughs> with me. Um but yeah, I wore like kind of like a casual outfit. And then, yeah, then we went for drinks and then I kind of dressed up a tiny bit more. Yeah. So the drinks was last night. Drinks was last night. She went for an all black outfit, which I think is a very good safe bet. Yeah. But safe, like, it's like sexy. Yeah. Which you want. I wanted to be like girl next door because I feel like we dress up quite, when we go out, we like, I feel like we are quite minimal, but we do like to give it a little bit of an elevated yeah. look so i went for an off the shoulder jumper from pretty mm-hmm. lavish you've got one from zara yeah and i feel like that's such a good staple to have in your wardrobe and i just yeah. paired that with oversized like wide jeans and a pair of black boots and i felt very cute in it and it was like it was kind of dressy but then not too much because yeah. i didn't know the vibe because it was just drinks yeah, and ultimately I think yeah. you want to feel comfortable and you want to feel good in what you're wearing which is why i yeah. always think that black is quite a good yeah option and i didn't know where we were going so if i knew the restaurant then it would have given me a hint to like really dress up or really dress down good outfit for all eventualities yeah i felt like it was a good dress code um and yeah it went really well um and i'm proud of myself for (laughs) dating i'm like how much do i want to (laughs) feel we might make you feel too uncomfortable but so, because I don't have dating apps, I would like to know from you, like, what are some of the icks that you've seen oh on a dating God. app? There's, do you know what the, one of my main things is when they're too naked. Like, okay, there's this, I screenshotted it actually, because obviously I had to do some research. And there was this one guy, it's like when they're topless. Yeah. And, but this guy was like, all in the gym and he's like pointing oh my goodness so he's pulled his his he's like, shorts down so yeah. you can see the v lines and he's like pointing like he's got his thumb kind of like pointing in it just That's to a show off it. yeah how disgusting is that <laughs> okay boys keep the i don't think many on. boys are going to be listening to this it's, so it's, it's fine, red but... flag red flag i think it's okay if you're like on holiday on the beach yeah with your mates but like in the gym with your top off or like flexing. in bed selfie oh god that's no, horrible no it was that was one of them also if you're like on a proper bender there's like some photos when they've gone like not festivals i don't mind because i yeah. feel like boys don't get many photos except Unless it's like an event. Yeah. Or they're with their friends and they're getting group photos. Yeah. So that's fair enough. But it's like just horrendous. And you're like, why would you do that to yourself? Like, I guess they're trying to see if someone would find that funny. Yeah. But that doesn't give me a good impression. No. Where if it's a mixture of like formal, yeah. you've got groups of friend photos. Yeah. Then yeah. But also as well, there's some pictures. And again, like boys don't really get many photos. But you can so tell when it's a girl taking the photo. It's like, yeah. that's... You, 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 your girlfriend took that when you were on a date. Or when you were on holiday. There was, like, one, you know, like, the follow me photo that we oh did in no. Bali. Someone's actually got that. And it's a girl's hand because she's got, like, a French manicure and everything. And I was like... That's but, terrible. Imagine Come seeing on. your ex and, like, seeing him pop up and hinge. And it's like, I took that photo. <laughs> I remember seeing profiles... And they hadn't filled out the questions. Oh. They had just done like a dot, like a full stop so, to avoid having to fill out the questions. That's kind of like Raya vibes. That gives me like, you think you're too good for this app, yet yeah. you're still on it. You can't be bothered to fill out the questions because you think you're like yeah. too cool to do that. Yeah. Or it's like too cringe. And you're just here to, you know, yeah. get one in. Yeah, literally. It is really funny and I feel like it's so hard to answer questions. But it's literally like, what does your typical Sunday look like? Yeah. Oh, hungover, roast dinner, or what's your first round for the drinks? Shots. My oh, oh. that's the worst. And what like, I order for the table. Yeah. It's awful. Or I feel like they have to have a like a hinge 
to-do list for your profiles to have a picture of you with a dog. <laughs> it's like the tick list. <laughs> Every guy has a dog in their pictures. It's hilarious. But yeah, we'll see. I'm, I'm, I'm getting back into my dating era. Era. I love being single because I've never really been single. But yeah, I'm just giving it a go. And I've been very lucky to have been on a date with a very lovely gentleman. He was very sweet. Okay, so we're going to leave this one there. Thank God. Next... <laughs> Change topic, quick, quick, quick. Change topic. Next week, we, contradictory to what we've just been speaking about, we're going to be speaking about being single, Mm -hmm. living alone in London, the tips that we have to, you know, like, keep yourself busy, Mm. and... It's so important. I think it's a really, like, hot topic. Even if you're living with friends, like, or, like, even when, if you're living with people you don't know that still can be like living alone and so we're going to kind of cover all things like that so if you're single you're living alone or you know you're just enjoying the podcast make sure you tune in next week thank you so much for listening guys or watching and we hope you enjoyed this episode and have a lovely easter weekend Woohoo! bye guys bye lovelies shalom farewell i'll be just saying good night